Hey everybody, this is Seth with the World of Paleoanthropology, and today I'm excited to bring you the third installment of my new video series, Skulls with Seth. Today we are going to be talking about Homo habilis, and one of the most complete and well-known skulls that we have of this species. Now, this is who we have. Its designation is KNMER. 1813 and that name comes from Kenyan National Museum and then the location and then the designation number 1813. This specific specimen was discovered in 1973 by Kamoya Kimu and it is about 1.9 million years old. So we're not talking about someone young in the Homo lineage. For those of you who might not know, and for the purpose of this video, Homo habilis, this guy right here, is the first of the Homo species. Now, there was a lot of debate and trying to figure out whether or not it would be appropriate to place this creature in the hominin Homo family genus because of its small brain size, which we can see here, which is quite small. I believe it is around 510 cubic centimeters, which is well below what people originally believed Homo should be. But Lewis Leakey fought very hard along with a few others to get this specimen designated as Homo. The name Homo habilis means handyman because they are believed to be the first tool makers, at least stone tool makers, because bone tools would not preserve as well as stone, and we would not have a record of them as we do with lithics or stone tools. However, in much recent studies, it has been shown that Homo habilis is probably not the first tool maker, since we have tools from Lomequi dating to 3.3 million years old, which is far out of the range of our friend here, Homo habilis. Now, Homo habilis, as we can see, definitely does have very Homo features. The face is not very prognathic, it's pretty flat. There's a semi vertical forehead, but there's a very domed skull, a very small domed skull, as we discussed. We can see on the back of this 3D print where the frame and magnum would be, which is about around here. So that means this is definitely a bipedal hominin, which makes sense given the time period as well as what we know about the species. We can see the nasal cavity is not very large, indicative of its general size as well as the eye orbits. And we can see that this creature probably was not very big. Now, this species, while it is the first of the Homo lineage for now, may not stay that way for much longer. As new and new species come out, we make new discoveries, make new inferences, and we try to figure out where does the species Homo really belong. Right now, it sits with Homo habilis as the first progenitor of our genus, but that may change. Originally, when Australopithecus sediba came out and was discovered and announced, many people believed that sediba was the direct ancestor of Homo habilis, since they are around 2 million years old, which did make sense, and there are many morphological similarities between the two, but later research kind of showed that sediba went on their own path and are not not ancestral to any homo. Which to many was disappointing, but to many it also made a lot of sense. Now, KNMER1813 was found a year after KNMER1470, which led to the exact nature of homo, and I'm quoting this from the Human Origins website provided by the Smithsonian, the discovery of KNM ER 1470 solidified Homo habilis as a species, but the large cranium and the big teeth of KNM ER 1470 contrasted with the find of our specimen here, 
K N M E R 1813. So what is now believed is that K N M E R 1470 is a male of the species, while our friend here is a female. Now, this does make sense because we know in early hominins, especially in apes and the farther back you go, sexual dimorphism, which is a difference in size, shape, or really anything between the two sexes, was much more dramatic than it is as we see in modern humans today. So this right here is a female of the habiline line, which is in part why it is so small, but even the progenitor that they found before this one, 1470, is still only a fraction larger. This species is very small. Now, we do have a great dental record from this skull. As you can see, we have many of the teeth, including erupted molars, with just a few of the incisors missing and a canine. But we can generally see how small these molars are, as well as all these other teeth, once again showing that this is indeed a homo and not an australopith. And by looking at the canines, which are kind of hard to see and are almost missing, they are not sharp. They're not projecting. There's no... Um, diastema between the canine and the rest of the teeth, meaning there's no gap between the canines and the other teeth where every time they open and close their mouth, like gorillas do, it actually sharpens their canines. So we don't see that in this species, which means they're farther away from the ape lineage than one would originally suspect, despite their small size and very primitive features. Now, Will Homo habilis be replaced as the first Homo? Possibly, possibly not. One thing we do probably know is that the term handyman and the first one to make stone tools is probably going to fly out the window in the next few years if it has not already thanks to new data and new evidence from Lomequi and other sites where stone tools have been found with associated bones with cut marks dating to much earlier. Now, look at this. Look how small this is. Very small compared to my head, and I don't, I mean, I know I don't have the smallest head, but this is quite a difference between cranial capacity, brain size, same thing, jaw size. It's just they're not modern humans. They're not close. They're not supposed to be. They are almost two million years separated from where we are in our evolutionary history. So Homo habilis has a long way to go. Whether their path directly leads to Homo sapiens is debatable. It's thought to be that way. We go from Homo habilis to Homo erectus to Homo rudolfensis to heidelbergensis, etc. and so on. We all know the general trajectory of the hominin clade. But where Homo habilis fits might be changing soon. And I think we all need to pay attention because as things start to change in anthropology and advance with new information, we all need to be open-minded and we all need to be accessing this new information in an open way and making it available for all to enjoy. Now, before I go, I did want to show one thing. It's a tiny bit of a product promotion, but I'm not getting anything for it. I just wanted to show something incredible that's also a preview of our next episode of Skulls with Seth. Now, this right here is a artistic piece, a hand pencil drawing of Homo Naledi, specifically Neo. Now, I got this from John's Illustration Workshop, John C. Illustration, amazing gentleman, amazing artist, amazing pieces. 
We're going to be talking about this skull right here. I have a cast of it. It's going to be great. I'll see you next time on the next episode of Skulls with Seth. Please be sure to like, subscribe, and make sure you hit that reminders button so you know every time a new video comes out. Because I come out with them all the time, and honestly, they really don't have a schedule anymore. So just be sure you know when they come out, because you're not going to want to miss the next episode. Have a great weekend. Have a great time. And remember, there's always, always more to learn.